I'm Bridget Grummet, and I'm the Metro columnist at the Austin American Statesman. The story that was important to me is the story about Tom Woodward, a man experiencing homelessness who lost all of his stuff that was being stored at a facility that is supposed to help people experiencing homelessness. Actually, Tom found me. Um, he reached out to me. I think he had seen some of my other coverage about um, people experiencing homelessness and thought maybe I might be able to help. He had already tried to resolve his issue with the city and had contacted the police department and basically everyone was telling him there was nothing they could do. I felt like what had happened to him um, on the surface, it just seemed so wrong. Um, I couldn't believe that it would be okay for this to happen and that institutions would just kind of pass the buck and be like, well, it's, it's not our problem. Nothing was gonna bring his stuff back but I felt like he deserved answers. He deserved some kind of recognition that this wasn't right. Also, what happened at the facility is something that could happen again if the city didn't take steps to fix it. So basically, um, Tom told me that he had stored his belongings at this facility that's called Violet Keep Safe Storage, and it's a city-run facility for people who are experiencing homelessness, and um, each person gets a locked storage bin. They get to set their own combination lock to it, and that way there's a place for them to store their belongings, any valuables they have, their paperwork, um, anything, so that they can then go to the doctor, go on job interviews, go to work, um, go do whatever they need to do, and know that their stuff is secure and they don't need to stay at a campsite to, to safeguard their stuff. It's a really important facility. It serves hundreds of people. Um, and so Tom had his stuff in a bin there. Um, he had the paperwork showing that this was his bin. Um, he had receipts for items that he had had in the bin. Basically, a, a staffer at the facility let someone else take the items out of his bin. Um, and so I contacted the city and sent them questions to find out what had happened. They were in the process of doing their own internal investigation, so I waited for the results of that. I also contacted the police department because Tom had filed a police report. Um, they had looked into the situation. Um, it was their determination that there was not a crime because it was a mix-up, right? Like the city had allowed the wrong person to have items from the bin. It wasn't like someone came in and held up the place. And so there wasn't, in the, in the view of the police department, there wasn't a crime. Anyone who uses the facility, they sign a waiver up front that absolves the city of any responsibility if something bad happens. And so the city was like, well, sorry, but you signed this waiver. What happened to him was so unfair. He had every reason to expect that his belongings would be held safe. Our city is spending tens of millions of dollars addressing homelessness, um, which is critically important. And it, at the same time, they were not taking care of this, this situation that happened on their watch. Not only for Tom, I mean, I felt like he deserved answers and restitution. I also felt like the hundreds of other people who use this facility need to know that their items are gonna be secure, they're going to be there when they get back, um, that they can rely on this facility. And, and I do want to emphasize, like, the city has made changes. Um, they've updated their software. Um, they also have security cameras now at the facility, which they previously did not have. So they've taken steps to make the place more um, secure. And I think that's really important so that people know their belongings are going to be cared for while they're there. He's a musician, and that's one of the ways that he earns money um, is by playing. So he had just... Uh, actually had just bought this guitar a couple months earlier. It's a source of income for him um, to be able to play gigs and so not having that was also making it harder for him to move forward. He also had tools, he had a lot of personal papers, um, he had a photo of his son that you know can't be replaced. First and foremost it was important for the city to be held accountable for what happened. It was important to make sure that they would take, that they would make changes to um, how the facility is run to ensure that other people can trust that their belongings are going to be secure there. A lot of people donated to a GoFundMe that he set up. Um, I mean, he, he ended up with, I think, $3,500 within a matter of hours. A bunch of people offered to either buy or donate a guitar to him. Um, he accepted one of those guitar donations. I'm sad about what he went through. It was heartening to see the response from the community, though. There were a lot of people who recognized that that what had happened to him was wrong. They wanted to be part of making it right, um, even as the city did not do anything to help um, replace what he had lost, the community stepped up to do that. And I, it was just really, um, just a really lovely moment to see our community come together like that.